Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Cobalt and in this video I'm going to be going over a uh, problem re involving the 2015 AFC Championship football game in which is also known as the Flake Gate. And we're going to look in to see like um, is the excuse of the temperature change between the field and the locker room uh, enough to to um, account for the uh, deflating of the ball. And so let's get into this. Uh, so in this problem, which is much longer, but I kind of condensed it um, in the following. So in the 2015 AFC Championship football game, it was alleged that the New England Patriots bent the rules by using underinflated footballs. NFL regulations require footballs to be inflated between 12.5 and 13.5 PSI or pounds per square inch. One football that was actually used in the game was measured to have a pressure of only 10.5 PSI gauge. Uh, was this due to the temperature difference between the locker room and the field? That's the question. Okay, so a few things to go over. I kind of um, wrote down some details to uh, consider that might be useful for, um, that will be useful for solving this problem. So uh, first I want to talk about uh, PSI gauge. Um, when we're talking about gauge uh, pressure, uh, we're talking about the pressure measured by the gauge itself. So for example, you go to, uh, you go to um, fill up your tire with air at the gas station. It's got a little gauge there. It tells you how much PSI is in your tire. Um, that's gauge pressure. Um, same thing with uh, if you get your uh, blood pressure taken at a hospital somewhere, uh, that is also gauge pressure. And what that means is that the pressure that is being measured includes in it um, or does not include in it the atmospheric pressure. So basically the gauge is set up, the instrument or whatever gauge is being used is set up such that at, at the atmospheric pressure, it reads it as zero. So anything above the atmospheric pressure is going to be the gauge pressure, right? So that is different from the absolute pressure. The absolute pressure includes the atmospheric pressure with the gauge pressure. So when they were given the PSIs here, the 10.5, the 12.5, the 13.5, that's gauge pressure measured by the gauge that is uh, being used to measure the pressure of the football. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to put that into absolute pressure. <clears throat> so we'll need to convert the gauge pressure into absolute pressure. Um, so that way we can look at the uh, change in the pressure uh, and then compare that to the temperature change. Speaking of temperature change, they give us the temperature in uh, Fahrenheit. So we're gonna have to convert that to Celsius and then convert it to Kelvin. And over here I have the two equations that we're gonna use. So the equation to convert uh, between uh, Celsius and Fahrenheit is this equation and the equation to then uh, convert between Kelvin and Celsius is this equation here. Okay, so what information are we given? We're given uh, the temperature on the field at the start of the game. So that's going to be 51 degrees Celsius or 51 degrees Fahrenheit. And we got the pressure in the locker room. So this is going to be the starting pressure because we're going to start in the locker room and then we move into the field where the temperature changes. So we have a starting temperature. So we'll call this at the start of the game on the field. This is going to be, we're going to label this as our final temperature or T2. So that's going to be T2. And uh, so the pressure in the locker room, that's going to be our P1, our initial starting pressure. So we're going to call that <clears throat> P1. And then the pressure of the ball on the field, that's the change in the pressure. So that's going to be our final pressure. So that's going to be P2. 
And then the pressure, or I'm sorry, the temperature in the locker room, that's going to be the initial temperature, the starting temperature. That's, so that's going to be our T1. And then here's some information that we're going to use. So we know that 101.325 kilopascals of pressure is equal to 14.7 PSI. So that's going to help us to convert our atmospheric pressure we're given here. So we're given atmospheric pressure of 100.95 uh, uh, kPa, kilopascal. So we want to convert that to PSI because our other pressure is at PSI. So we're going to use that here. And then also the volume of the ball is constant. Um, we're going to assume that's constant. <clears throat> and the amount of air in the ball is constant. So we're not losing any air. We're not gaining any air. So that's constant. So um, therefore, oops. Sorry about that. Therefore, we have to figure out what um, uh, gas law we're going to use. Okay, but we'll talk about that later. Let's start by converting some stuff and getting this into the units we want. So first thing we want to do is uh, change our atmospheric pressure. So we're going to change our atmospheric pressure uh, using the conversion factors. So we have 100.95 kilopascals over one and we're going to use this conversion factor to convert to psi so here uh we got 101.325 kilopascals is equal to 14.7 psi so we're going to use that as a conversion factor so the 101 0.325 kilopascals is going to go on the bottom and the 14.7 psi goes on top kilopascal cancel out and so when we calculate this we get a psi of 14.646 so this is going to be 14.6 Four six psi. So that's the atmospheric pressure uh, in psi. Okay. So now, now we want to do our temperature change. We're going to have to get this into uh, into Kelvin because we can't do any gas laws. We can't use gas laws uh, using Celsius or Fahrenheit. But we have to, so we have to use Kelvin. So. We're going to use this equation to convert to Celsius first. So Celsius, the degree Celsius is going to be equal to the Fahrenheit temperature, which is 51. So 51 degrees Fahrenheit minus 32 multiplied by 5 divided by 9. And so when we do that, we get a Celsius temperature of... Uh, 10.556, so 10.556 degrees Celsius. And then using this equation, we're going to convert it to Kelvin. And so we're going to add 273.15 to this. So Kelvin is going to be equal to 10.556 degrees Celsius plus... 273.15 and then when we add that together we're going to get where is it 283.706 so 283.706 kelvin so this is our temperature so again that's going to be t Two, so here, that's our final temperature, and we need to find T1. Okay, so we've got our temperature in the right units. We've got the uh, 
atmospheric pressure and PSI. Okay, so now what we want to do is get the PSI into absolute uh, pressure or absolute rather than gauge. So right now everything is in gauge, um, but we want it into um, uh, we want it in absolute. So that's why we have this. So this is the um, pressure of the atmosphere in PSI. And remember, absolute pressure is going to be the gauge pressure plus the atmospheric pressure. So we're going to add 14.646 PSI to the gauge pressures that we have, right? So uh, we have 12.5 PSI and 10.5 PSI. So we want to add the atmospheric pressure, the 14.646 to that. So we're going to add, so here we have the pressure in the locker room is 12.5 PSI. So 12.5 PSI plus, here let me clarify this. So the uh, let's see, where is this? So this is the P1 gauge. So we want the P1 absolute pressure. So that's going to be 12.5 PSI plus the atmosphere. That's going to be 14.646 PSI. And so that's going to equal, what do I have? 27, 1456. So 27, 1456. Let me just double check that. 27, 1456 PSI. And so this is the absolute uh pressure or the absolute yeah the absolute pressure and then for the p for p2 that's 10.5 so again it's going to be p2 absolute is going to equal 10.5 psi again adding to that the atmospheric pressure 14.646 psi and that's going to be equal to 25.1456 PSI for the absolute temperature. Let me double check to make sure I got that right. Okay. That is correct. Okay. And the next we're going to do uh the uh, gas law but first let me make uh, a change here so this should be sorry not five six but six one four six okay so now that we have that taken care of let us put together our gas law okay so here is the information rewritten with the changes, the conversions. And so now we want to figure out, well, what, what law are we going to use? Um, the, way, the way you can do this is write out the, the, uh, the formula for the combined gas law. So that would be P1 V1 over N1 T1 is equal to P2 v2 over n2 t2 and to figure out what formula you would use if you're not sure if you get confused between all the formulas well what's the right one start with this and then eliminate anything that's considered constant or is not mentioned in the problem so in this case i want to remind us that we were told that volume and the amount of gas are constant. So we want to get rid of anything that's constant. So we're going to get rid of volume and the amount of gas. So N here is the amount of gas in moles. So we're going to get rid of that. And then volume, we're going to get rid of that. And so what's left is the equation we use. So in this case, 
the final equation is going to be P1 over T1 is equal to P2 over T2. So now all I need to do is plug in the information that I have. So I have my T2, my T1, my P1, my P2. So I'm going to just plug that into my equation and solve for the missing part, which is my temperature T1, temperature in the locker room. So we're going to go ahead and put that information in. So T2 is 283.706. So we're going to have P1. What's P1? P1 is 27. So we're going to have 27.146 PSI over T1. And T1, we don't know. So we'll just keep that as T1. That's the temperature in the locker room. That's what we're trying to find out. And then we have, um, oops. Uh, then we have P2. That's going to be equal to P2. So P2 is here. That's the pressure on the field, 25.146. So 25.146 PSI. And then we got T2. And that's the temperature on the field. So that's 283. <laughs> 283.706 Kelvin. And so now all we need to do is solve for T1. And what, uh, the way we do that, we can cross multiply and then figure out the answer. Um, so you find the temperature T1. Let me erase this to give myself some room. So you could cross multiply. So then T1 multiplied by 25.146 PSI. And then that's going to be equal to these two multiplied together. So it's going to be 27.146 PSI multiplied by uh, the 283. 283.706 Kelvin. Oops. Let me let me redo that. So T1 multiplied by 25.146 psi equal to 27.146 PSI multiplied by 283.706 Kelvin. So now multiply these together, divide by this. So then I divide by 25.146 PSI. Divide over here by 25.146 PSI. So then this cancels out. And I have T1 by itself on this side. And then the PSI over here cancels out. So then I multiply by this, divide by this, and I get, I get the uh, answer in Kelvin, which is what I want because temperature and then the temperature unit. So then when I do this, I get T1 is equal to 306,266. 306.266 Kelvin. But, you know, let's get this back into the temperature Fahrenheit because that's what they gave us. So to convert this to Celsius, we'll convert this to Celsius first by subtracting 273.15, so then 306.266 minus 273.15, that's going to give us 331158, 
So that's going to give us 33.1158 degrees Celsius. And then we can take that and we're going to plug it into the equation here and uh, solve for Fahrenheit. So in this case, degrees Fahrenheit is going to be equal to um, the degrees Celsius multiplied by nine fifths, okay, and then add 32. So that's going to give us the degrees Fahrenheit. So our 30, our degrees Celsius is here. So we'll plug that in. So then this becomes 33.1158 degrees Celsius multiplied by 9, divide by 5, and then you're going to add 32 to that. And then when we do that, you get 91.6. So 91.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And so if the argument is correct that the change in our pressure between P1 and P2 is due to the change in temperature of going into the locker room and going out on the field, if that is correct, then the temperature in the locker, uh, locker room must have been 91.6 degrees Fahrenheit. You decide if that's reasonable. Okay, that's it for this video. If you uh, like this video, if you enjoyed this problem and you enjoyed the video, then please like the video, share the video, hit that like button somewhere over there or around here somewhere, find it, click it. Also do me a favor, hit that uh, uh, bell, right? Subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell. When you do that, make sure you click all so you can be notified by all the videos I put out. And finally, put a comment down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Ask me questions. I would love to hear from you. Um, if you have a, a problem or a question you need help with, or if you have a topic you would like me to cover, put that down below. I would love to do that for you. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.